In this video, modeling depths approaches involved in engineering research and development processes are presented. We consider CAR as an example and start system modeling from simple as possible to complex as necessary. We are starting from mass spring damper system which is a one degree of freedom model, and we further add complexity based on demanded requirements to construct 2, 4, 5 and 10 degrees of freedom models by gradually incorporating effects of pitch, roll, suspension and road contact forces, and engine mountings, respectively. If you are new to my channel, please support by like, share, and subscribe for future notifications. When we are talking about modeling depths, we are talking about transforming a real system to a theoretical model. It involves description of parts of the system that play vital role in system dynamics. The basic principle is that the models are to be as simple as possible, however, as complex as necessary. The models rely on the underlying system parameters and inputs. Once the model is built, the mathematical equations that relate the inputs and outputs are derived. Simulation and analysis helps to optimize system parameters and ultimately better design with better system parts selection, desired response, control and reliability. The basic question that an engineer should ask is, how to transfer a real system to a theoretical equivalent vibration system? Well, there are a lot of answers to that question. We first must look at the original system, and then we must ask the question, what is the simplest simulation model, for example, of a car? And this simulation model can be seen on the left side of the screen. And what we see there is a system with just a mass, a spring and a damper. Now, this is the reduction of the entire car to one translational degree of freedom, which means that we can look at the vertical bounce of the system. This results in a one degree of freedom system. The simulation results that we can get from this system are simple vertical dynamics. We may further ask the important questions. Are there any other possibilities to see the problem in more detail and have more refined models or are we ignoring something important in this model? Of course, there is another possibility. For example, to model the pitch behavior and the basic question again is, how to model the pitch motion of a car? For such a model, we have to add additional information. First of all, we not only need the mass, but also the inertia of the body of the car. Then, we'll be also talking about additional springs and additional dampers that represent somehow the suspension system of the car. Now, this means that in addition to the one translational degree of freedom which is the vertical bounce that we already had with the first model, we can also look at one rotational degree of freedom, and that is the pitch motion of the car. So, if we calculate one translational degree of freedom and one rotational degree of freedom, we end up with a two degree of freedom planar system. The simulation results that we can get from this model are simple vertical dynamics with bounce and pitch behavior. Knowing that we have a matured bounce and pitch behavior dynamics as the basis, we may further incorporate the effects of suspension and road contact forces. We can now ask another question and that is, how to simulate both suspension forces and road contact forces? To do that we start with the system that we had previously. If we look at this picture, we still have mass and inertia of the body of the car, but we have now several springs and dampers that we need to model this system. We can see that we have the pitch and bounce model from the previous example as the basis. Now, we have added two masses for the front and rear suspension systems. With additional front and rear wheel bounds coordinates, we have altogether four coordinates which means that now we have a four degree of freedom planar system that allows us to get more simulation results. Additional to the bounce and pitch behavior of the car, we can also simulate additional suspension forces and wheel contact forces. And of course, we can further refine the model by considering the effects of strut assembly, ball joint, sway bar and outer tire odds. However, even now, we still have the possibility to further refine our model or make it more detailed as compared to the previous one. One such refinement would be to consider engine and how to simulate elastic engine mounting in a car. So, this would be the updated model that we have. We still have mass and inertia for the body, we have still several springs and dampers and additionally, we now introduce the engine mass and also the engine mounting with spring and damper. Now, we can again see that the original system is the system from the previous model, that is, we have pitch and bounce model for the system as well as we have front and rear wheel bounce coordinates, this create our new model basis. With the additional engine mass and with the spring and damper for the engine mounting, we end up with a system that has five degrees of freedom. It's still a planar system, but it allows now to look at the additional engine bounce coordinate. As a simulation result, we still have bounce and pitch behaviors of the car body. We also have the additional suspension forces and road contact forces and also engine bounce. 
we can further refine by considering a quarter car model with masses of engine, chassis, wheel and axle, and similarly, the corresponding spring damper mountings for foundations, suspension and wheel stiffness. So far, we have only seen planar models, but we can also extend the model to looking at the roll behaviors of a car. We can answer the question of how to additionally simulate the roll behavior of the car. This can be done by using a spatial model. It means that we now have masses and inertia, but not only just inertias, but, in fact, inertia matrices, because we are now looking at spatial motion. We have again several springs and dampers in different positions, but most of the positions, as you can see from the picture, are very similar to the positions that we used previously. As already shown, we have a spatial three-dimensional model with four simple masses, which are representing the suspension system, and we have two three-dimensional masses representing the car body and the engine. Adding together all the coordinates that we are now using, we have our detailed 10 degree of freedom spatial system with six bounce coordinates, where four bounce coordinates are for the suspension system, and the other two are for the car body and for the engine. Additionally, we have two pitch coordinates and two roll coordinates for car body and engine. Finally, we have a 10 degree of freedom spatial system. As a simulation result, we can now look at the spatial bounce and pitch behaviors of the car body and engine. We can also look at suspension forces and road contact forces. Even now, we can still look at further model refinement. So, the question is, what additional model refining could be envisioned? This is just a very short overlook. We can add seat and driver. This addition would look very similar to adding the engine with its spring and damper mountings. Because then, the mass that we have to consider is the mass of the driver together with part mass of the seat, and the seat softness or springiness would then define the spring and the damper that we have to introduce. Then, we can simulate the sit riding, mostly the sit riding comfort, that the driver will experience. We can also subdivide the car into several bodies. That means that we can look at torsion and bending of the car body. Another possibility would be that we look closer into what happens with the engine. That means that the motor can be modeled with crankshaft connecting rods, and so on such as flexible body dynamics. Then, we would have a closer look into the effect of engine vibrations and acoustics. We can think of some other possibilities, but these are mostly what makes sense with regards to multi-body systems. Of course, talking about multi-body systems, we could also imply complete multi-body simulations. Here you just see a part of a multi-body simulation system that is looking at the suspension system. It means that we can use a complex multi-body simulation model that represents all relevant bodies in a system. At some point, we could especially look, as you see from the pictures, into a suspension testing system, and then see what forces and vibrations may occur. The simulation results in general could be that we are having a closer look into vehicle dynamics, also regarding noise, vibration and harshness, what is called NVH. So, this type of NVH investigation can be done with a multi-body simulation system. If we compare the different modeling techniques, we see that the system can be transferred in many different equivalent systems from very simple system model to more complicated system models. The validity of the modeling approach depends mostly on the desired results. Usually, the more precise results we want to get from our model, the more precise and the more detailed the model has to be built up which also means that we have to look for many different parameters. In many cases, it is also necessary to have an idea about the precision of the parameters that we need for our model. However, if in the start we're unsure about how detailed we can get our parameters, then possibly it is better to start with a less detailed, a simple model to get the preliminary ideas and results about what might happen. Then, step by step, be able to build the model more and more detailed and of course, complicated. So, the basic principle for the model is that it should be as simple as possible, but it should just be as complex as necessary. So, this concludes the presentation.